Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and the 2017 use mode just finished, so let's go over some of the problems. This is problem number one of the 2017 use mode. So let's first read the problem. Prove that there are infinitely many distinct pairs, a comma b, of relatively prime integers a greater than 1 and b greater than 1, such that a to the power of b plus b to the power of a is divisible by a plus b. So we have two conditions here, well, three conditions. First, we have a greater than 1, b greater than 1. We can see that they simply said this because when we plug in a equals 1, it's just automatically divisible already because they're the same thing. So, okay, so this condition makes sense. We also have this condition of relatively prime. So I think this is what will give us some trouble because if they aren't relatively prime, we can probably just do something like a equals b equals 2 or a equals b equals 3 or a equals b equals anything and it'll work as well. So this relatively prime will probably make the problem a little harder. And finally, we have our main condition here, a to the power of b plus b to the power of a divisible by a plus b. So I don't really like having a plus b divide something because it's the sum of two numbers dividing something, and that's usually not very nice. So wh what I'm going to do here is I'm going to substitute a plus b equals c. So this will we will have a single number being a factor of some random number. So um, let's substitute b in as c minus a. So we have everything in terms of a and c. Uh, our divisibility is c divides a to the c minus a plus c minus a to the a. And now we can use our divisibility rules to see that just get rid of that c in there to get c a to the c minus a plus negative a to the a is negative 1 to the a times a to the a. And since we know that the GCD of a and b is 1, then it follows that the GCD of a and a plus b is also 1. In other words, a and a and a and c so that means that we can safely divide both sides here by a to the power of a assuming that of course c minus a is greater than or equal to a which we can do because we can without loss of generality assume that a is less than or equal to b so let's divide both sides by a to the power of a we're just uh, plugging and uh, simplifying and trying to do as much as we can in order to make this statement as simple as possible right here and we're left with this now this is really good because now we don't have some random number on both sides of the plus sign on one side of the plus sign we actually just have positive one or negative one which is really convenient because we know a lot of information about divisibility if uh, one of these so one of these numbers on the plus sign on the one side of the plus sign is uh, negative one so we want this to be negative one so let's just set a to be odd for now this will be our first assumption a is odd like so so this turns into c divides a to the c minus a or sorry c minus 2a plus or not plus minus one so now this is really good because we have this very familiar format and uh, since a and c are relatively prime this reminds us of the euler totient theorem which says that c divides a to the phi of c the euler totient function minus one and these are almost the exact same thing so why not make these actually just the exact same thing so if we let that happen, we have that c minus 2a is equal to Euler totient function of c, and this is our second assumption. So hopefully this will end up with a valid construction. Um, well, we see that we have, we can isolate a actually by moving stuff around, c minus Euler totient function of c over 2. So. What we have now is we know a is odd, and we also know a is c minus Euler totient function of c over 2. So uh, 
In order for A to be odd, we want to have the number of factors of 2 that divides the Euler totient function of, oh sorry, the number of factors of 2 that divides C minus phi of C is exactly 1, so that uh, this thing turns out to be an integer, but also it turns out to be odd. So how can we have that happen? Well, let's take a look at the factors of C. We can have P1, E1, P2, oops, P2, E2, all the way to P, K, E, K. And the phi of C is equal to P1 minus 1 times all the way to P, K minus 1 times P1 to the E1 minus 1, uh, sorry, times all the way to PK to the EK minus 1. EK minus 1. Okay, so we want C minus phi of C to be, uh, to have only one factor of 2. So if uh, all these P's are odd, then that means C is odd. However, this uh, phi of C we see has the factors P minus 1 through P minus K, and each of these numbers are even. So if C was odd, then we have C minus phi of C is odd, which we don't want. So that means we have to have a factor of 2 here. Now, if this 2 had uh, any sort of mul multiplicity greater than 1, then that means C is divisible by, by 4, and then phi of C is also divisible by 4, because we have at least one factor of uh, P1 here, which contributes a factor of 2, and as well as we having um, the 4 turn into a 2 in phi of C, which contributes another factor of 2. So uh, both of these are multiples of 4, so C minus phi of C has two factors of 2 in it, which is also bad. So we have to only have a single factor of 2 in C. So now that we have a single factor of 2 in C, uh, this seems to work out fine. We have that C, um, uh, this thing has only one factor of 2, C only has one factor of 2, while phi of C has uh, multiple factors of 2. So when we subtract them, we get the final C minus phi of C has exactly one factor of 2. So there is the technicality that since C minus 2A is equal to phi of C and C and A are relatively prime, then the greatest common divisor of C and phi of C is either 1 or 2. And since C and phi of C are both even, then we know that their greatest common divisor has to be 2. So these two numbers actually have to have um, greatest common divisor 2. So we can't have these P mi P1 minus 1 through PK minus K, sorry, PK minus 1 overlap with any of these P1, P2 through PKs. So how might we do that? Well, since we're only trying to find a construction, we can try to make this as simple as possible. So if we start out with c is equal to 2, so what should we do next? Well, we want to make this as simple as possible. So let's try multiplying by p, where p is a prime, where p is an odd prime. Then phi of c is equal to um, uh, p minus 1, like so. So does this work? Well, it looks like it might work, except for um, uh, there's a little bit of a technicality where p minus 1 can only have one factor of 2. So then 2 times p minus p minus 1 might turn out to uh, have more than one factor of 2. So I don't really want to deal with that right now because I'm lazy. So let's try adding another factor here. And in this case, it doesn't even need to be some variable. I'll just multiply by 3 on both sides. So this turns into... 2 times p minus 1. And in this case, we see that c has exactly one factor of 2, and p minus 1 times 2 is guaranteed to have um, uh, at least two factors of 2. So c minus phi of c over 2 will be odd and an integer. So this is good. So our proposed construction is c equals 6p, and a equals, oops, a equals 6p minus 2p plus 2, which um, should be 4p 
4p plus 2, and then we have to divide by 2, so that equals 2p plus 1, so that means b is equal to um, uh, 4p minus 1. Okay, so we have a equals 2p plus 1, b equals 4p minus 1, and this is our proposed construction. So first we have to check when this is actually satisfies the greatest common divisor equals 1 condition. So we want GCD of 2p plus 1 and 4p minus 1 to equal 1. Well, this is equal to GCD of 2p plus 1. Subtracting 2p plus 1 twice from 4p minus 1 gives negative 3 equals 1. And negative 3, positive 3, same difference. So we want 2p plus 1 to not be divisible by 3. In other words, p is congruent to 2 mod 3. So can we find an infinite number of primes that are 2 mod 3? And uh, indeed we can. Uh, you can totally kill this problem with Dirichlet's theorem, but there is a very easy, simple explanation. Simply just take uh, assume the contrary, that there's only finitely many primes that are 2 mod 3. Then you have that if p1 through pk are those 2 mod 3 primes, then you multiply them together, square them, and then add 1. Note that um, any prime divisor of this is a uh, is relatively prime to p1 through pk. In addition, we have that p1, p2, all the way to pk multiplied together is going to be either 2 or 1 mod 3, so that squared is going to be only 1 mod 3, so if you add 1, it's going to be 2 mod 3. So we have this expression that's 2 mod 3 that is relatively prime to all primes that are 2 mod 3, and that's a contradiction. You can't have that. So um, uh, this means that there's an infinite number of primes that are 2 mod 3, so indeed this we can find an infinite number of a and b satisfying this condition right here, such that A and B are relatively prime. So uh, it remains to check if this actually satisfies this first condition that we had over here. And uh, since I went through the math and uh, plugged in numbers so that it would work, it does, it will satisfy it. But when you write it up in the actual um, uh, contest, I think it's best to do all of this um, on your scratch paper and end up with this construction and then you can write up the actual solution with this construction only and going through these steps over here in the front with this specific construction and I think that will make things the clearest. So um, our final construction is a equals 2p plus 1, b equals 4p minus 1 where p is a prime that's 2 mod 3 and we are done. Let's begin prepping for Olympiads. Uh, this is going to be um, IMO shortlist 2002 geometry problem number two.